Rod, one of the great philosophical questions is, is materialism the theory that everything works according to the movement of forces and particles at some fundamental physics level? Is that sufficient to explain all that exists that we, that we deal with? And so if we define materialism that way, there are many people today, many people who don't even believe in God or dualism or something like that, who really believe that materialism is wrong. And when you push them hard, their only recourse is to talk about consciousness. That consciousness seems to be the only thing that potentially, in their minds, would defeat a purely materialistic point of view. From your background, from your sense of working in artificial intelligence, how do you view that? Do you think consciousness ultimately can defeat materialism? I don't think that consciousness can defeat materialism. I think it, it, that consciousness and, and the things that we are emerge from the biological activity of the biomolecules. But that emergence may be quite complex. So I think, you know, modern physics says that chemistry emerges from physics. Mm -hmm. There are fundamental particles, they interact in certain ways, and out of that comes chemistry. But you wouldn't try to have a chemistry department which was just made up of physicists who didn't have the specialized chemical knowledge. Sure. We've managed, we've managed to go from, you know, with a single uh, proton and electron hydrogen, we've managed to go from the physics to the chemistry in terms of, of, of modeling exactly what's going on and see the chemistry emerge right. in simple situations from the physics. We haven't done it for, for larger atoms. So we need, a different set of tools to describe the chemistry. It doesn't mean that chemistry doesn't come from physics. It means that's a really complex understanding. Right. And I think that same is true in the biological systems and with consciousness. I think that it comes from what is below, but we aren't able to bridge that gap in any way right now. So it is worth asking the questions at that higher level in the same way it's worth asking questions at the chemical level even though it all emerges from physics. Below. Okay, and that's a, a completely consistent position, uh, and a lot of people believe it, and, and it has a lot of, uh, of uh, certainly scientific resonance to it. Here's where, the, here's where we get the, the fork in the road. On the one hand, we would say that the higher levels is totally uh, the result of the lower levels, and we don't have enough information maybe for a very long time to do it, but it, in principle, we'll have it. So at the chemistry level, we know it's derived from physics, uh, but we can't predict it. We have to have laws at the chemical level to be good chemists. But ultimately, in some ultimate physics, if we knew every spin and field, that we could predict that. The question is, when you get to consciousness, in principle, can you make that same statement? Can you say that for consciousness, if we knew everything at the lower level, we could, in principle, predict and explain consciousness. I think that's an in principle uh, valid uh, thing to say. It's so far in the future, it's, it's hard to, and that's fine. to think about. And that's but fine. In principle, in, 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 principle, in, in principle it is, because the, the other argument says that would call the emergence a radical emergence would say that in principle it will be impossible ever to be able to make that leap. But that's not saying there's some spirit or ghost or soul or anything like that. It just says that the principles of the physical world are such that to go to consciousness requires something so different in the structure of the physical world that it's in principle impossible to yeah, predict and, from and below. I, and, I, and you would reject I, that. I reject that. And, and I like to think about the, the, that level of complexity change with an analogy with, with a, a, a modern computers. Um, if you look at what a, a, a computer is doing um, down at the lower level with numbers or bits going in and out of registers mm -hmm. and back and forth, right. it's, we, we can't infer the structure of the C++ programming language. Right. Right. But we know that what it's doing it was written in C++ and right. it's running a spreadsheet, which is yet another level right, right, right. to talk about. Uh, of uh, the P&L of your company. <laughs> yes, yeah, 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 so out into the physical world, right. into the uh, economic world. But, but when we just probe and look at those things, we, we, even though we built the thing, 
it's it's really hard to reverse engineer it. And it's not because there's anything more there. It's just the complexity is so staggering right. uh, between those layers right. that it's not obvious when you go and look. So that in principle argument about consciousness coming out of the physical layer, it may be something we never do because it would take, you know, longer than the universe exists to, to work through all the, the, uh, the computations, if you're computationally modeling it, yeah. of, of, a, of a, a simple worm even, yeah. and its level of consciousness. Yeah. It, it's it, hard to know how much detail there is there. Yeah. Th that's granted. But the question is, in principle, is in it principle. possible? Because many people now say that it's not possible, that there are kinds of laws operating at the level of, of consciousness which are sufficiently different. Now, they may be the equivalent of a, I mean, to take an extreme case, a, a fifth law of, of force of, of nature. And, uh, you know, uh, I, can't, I can't rule that out. That may be the case. that We've, we've come across new forces before. Yeah. In <laughs> but um, since conscious, consciousness is so abundant around us, if it relies on this other law, I think we would have started to see other manifestations of it. I think we would see kinesthetic effects, you know, action at a <laughs> distance from mind. <laughs> Every one of those has been, has been shown not to, to mm -hmm. exist. So I, I think it's highly unlikely why this extra force hasn't appeared in other ways if it was that fundamental. Do we have any um, help uh, from the rapid development of artificial intelligence over particularly the last uh, um, several decades in, 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 in apprehending uh, the nature of consciousness, which gives you this confidence? Well, I, th I think there's an interesting thing that's, that's, that, that, that happens sometimes. Um, the sheer bulk of computation doing some task makes us understand things differently. Mm -hmm. So uh, Kasparov, who's the world chess champion, mm -hmm. famously played the Deep Blue program mm -hmm. from IBM. And he's, he had played earlier programs. And at some point he said, now it's playing differently. Yeah. Now it has strategy. Yeah. Well, in fact, it wasn't any different particular algorithm from before. It was just running faster. But to him now, it was doing things well yeah. enough that it felt like it had strategy yeah. to him. Uh, a a, a well-known uh, person who works in theorem proving um, with computers uh, said to me about the same time that there was so much computation going on, he felt that his, th whereas before he felt his theorem proving programs were just searching a tree, get, doing every mm. possibility and right, finding right, the, right. the chain. He was feeling like it was, as he watched it, it was getting on an approach and following yeah. that approach. He knew it wasn't, but he kept so feeling that. At a certain level of, of, uh, of deep uh, quantitative improvement, you suddenly have a sense of qualitative difference. Yes, yes. And I think we saw that most recently with the um, Watson program from IBM that played Jeopardy. Yes. Some of those answers yes. that it came up with were completely amazing. Yes. How did it know to make that analogy, yes. that word play? How did it know that? Um, the authors of those programs will say, well, it didn't really know it was applying statistical techniques and doing a big mm -hmm. search. Mm -hmm. But to us, it it was really astonishing how it got some of those answers. And yet it's clear that the human brain doesn't work in that same way because chess players may be looking 10 plies, as they call it, ahead, whereas uh, Deep Blue may be doing 200 million in, in, in these uh, branching searches. So it's not the same way, it's not the same but way. it feels the same. Yes, and it's, it's so to me that says we see, that, we, we see another version of that emergence mm in these artificial yeah. intelligence yeah. systems. And it feels to us the same as seeing it in a human. And we know it's different. So that says to me, it, we don't need more stuff than mechanism to explain it.